Welcome to the 2021 Art of the African Diaspora first ever virtual artist reception. It's actually our opening artist reception. This is virtual, right? Can we, uh, whoever's uh, not muted, could you please mute yourself? Thank you. I'm Pat Patterson, and I'll be your moderator today. Hope everybody's doing great. We're very pleased and proud to present this different version, a virtual version of our regular art uh, reception that we have usually at the Richmond Art Center. And earlier today, I was thinking about things and I said, boy, about this time, I'd be trying to figure out what I'm gonna wear, who I'm gonna call to maybe ride over with. And then the big thing is when the doors open there, the kaleidoscope of color 
the diversity of the art. There's just so much, the community of folks. And I think we're like shoulder to shoulder at the, uh, at the actual Richmond Art Center. So today we're gonna do a little different. It's our first ever virtual art uh, reception. So before we get, so if, if any, whoever's, um, if you could all mute yourselves, except for me, I get to talk. Thank you. So before we get started, I invite you to get cozy. Hope you have your little beverage. Uh, the cool thing about a virtual, as, as you know, a virtual um, meeting or Zoom is that you can um, be as comfortable as you want to be. You don't have to worry about putting on those perfect shoes and, and doing all that stuff. So anyway, I hope you, I hope you really enjoy this. We hope you really enjoy this uh, event, this experience. Um, a few housekeeping rules. Number one, please mute your, you, mute your mics. And towards, uh, along the way, there, there will be uh, several uh, opportunities for questions and answers. And so um, I invite you to, if you have a question, put it in the chat box and also include your email address. Just in case we can't get to your question, we'll for sure send it to you via email. And then the other thing I strongly urge you to do is take pictures of the screen. So if you see something you like, um, do, a, do a screenshot or actually just grab your, you know, your uh, smartphone and take a photo of it. I do that all the time and that way you'll have it. Now we'll have some important resource information and um, a couple of things that we'll take the time to let you um, take a photo of at, towards the end of the um, um, show. Um, so you'll have a chance to get some valuable information and, and it, it's focused around finding out how to get in touch with us and um, those kinds of things. So um, we're ready to roll. I wanna also acknowledge Fong Chung of Rhythmix, who's my partner in crime here. So he's gonna help on the techie side, get us rolling, get us through the, uh, through the show. And um, by the way, it's a combination of slides, uh, excellent videos, some real, we found some vintage stuff. So it's gonna be a combination of, of those things. Plus you already saw some of the new 2021 art that we'll show at the front end and also at the back end. So it promises to be, I think, a really, really a good experience. And I hope you all enjoy it. And I wanna welcome, I wanna say a special welcome to the 130 plus artists that are amongst us and also uh, visitors and supporters who are coming. They're here in the Bay Area, but they're also, I wanna do a shout out to the folks all over the country. Art of the African di Diaspora, <clears throat> excuse me. This Black Artists ex Exhibition is the longest running event of its kind in the Bay Area. In 2021, Art of the African Diaspora brings together over 130 artists of African descent. Their work is showcased in a hybrid virtual slash in-person event presented online and at venues throughout the Bay Area. Next slide. I wanna share the 2021 program with you. Um, it's got several facets to it, and each one of them is exciting and um, just great, great work to, to view and to purchase. Um, first of all, our online exhibition started February 11th, and it runs through May 16th. The satellite exhibitions and artist happenings are where you visit the um, Richmond Art Center's website and explore listings for the satellite exhibitions and artist organized happenings. And that's where the real uh, chunk of, of information lies. And the, the website is richmondartcenter.org. And then lastly, we have guest speaker events. And next Saturday, March 27th, there's a really, really intriguing one called Art in the Time of Pandemic. And that's where a panel of artists will discuss how the pandemic has affected their work and lives. That's Saturday, March 27th, 3 p.m. to 4.30 Pacific time. And then last, murals, a vision of social justice. That's Saturday, September 17th, 3 to 4.30 Pacific time. And it's a conversation with artists who have created murals in the Bay Area during the uprising for Black Lives. 
And we certainly have a lot of examples of those around the area. So what is the art of the African diaspora about? It's about honoring the past. This event was founded in 1997 as the Art of Living Black by Jan Hart Shires and Ray Louise Hayward after their realization that black artists were not being represented by the galleries in any significant way. Art, um, Hart Shires and Hayward developed the exhibition to present the work of emerging and established artists, African-American artists, to introduce them to new audiences and to build a creative community of artists and art lovers. Tragically, Hart Shires passed away in 1998 and Hayward died in 2008. So this organization is also about creating, I'm sorry, celebrating the present. In 2020, we invited an esteemed Bay Area arts professional to select three artists to receive the annual Artistic Achievement Award. They are Tiffany Conway, Val Kayi, and Fan Lee Warren. These artists will have their work featured in this 2021 opening reception, as well as in the 2022 Art of the African Diaspora exhibition at the Richmond Arts Center. And if you can just take a look on the, um, Fong, if you could go back one slide, if you take a look on the right, those are uh, samples of each of their artworks. Top left is Tiffany's, um, top right is Fan Lee's, and the bottom uh, is Val Kaye's. The organization is all, also about planning for the future. Last year, the steering committee of artists that now produces the event announced its new name, Art of the African Diaspora. The steering committee remains dedicated to the vision of Hart Shires and Hayward, but felt the time had come for the event to have a name that will allow it the autonomy to grow and to reflect a new era. And we have big plans, big plans for 2022. So get your party outfits ready as the Art of the African Diaspora celebrates its 25th anniversary. So who's behind this? Who's, who are the, the, the wheels that make this whole thing turn? I wanna introduce the uh, various committees that are making this all happen and responsible for us today to have this great organization today. They are, the steering committee um, is um, comprised of Stephen Bruce, Jimmy Evans, Virginia Jordan, Tomei Neil Madison, Marva Reed, Justice Renaissance, Orlando Ufre, and the Arthur Wright. The advisory committee is comprised of Renata Gray and Raymond L. Haywood. And finally, the auxiliary committee is comprised of Derek Bell, Diamela Coutinho, Irene B. Kane, Paula Lewis, Mianta McKnight, Kume Rauf, Ash, uh, Ashley Rain, Akili Simba, and Anthony Smalls. I'll give them a, give them a big hand. <laughs> we also want to thank our acknowledge, recognize, acknowledge, and thank our generous sponsors. They are Elizabeth Kalas and George Tomberlin. And a big thank you to our longtime event partners. I'm gonna read them all, so bear with me. African American Art and Culture Complex, Arts and Cultural Commission, Culture Commission of Contra Costa County, Creative Framing Oakland, Ethnic Notions, Jingle Town Art Studios, Joyce Gordon Gallery, Laney College, Mills College, Oak Stop, RBA Creative, Rhythmics, Cultural Works, Richmond Art Center, San Francisco African American and His African American Historical and Cultural Society, San Pablo Gallery, Warehouse 416, Women's, Women's Cancer Resource Center, and our new partners, Macy's Union Square, San Francisco. Thank you. So now we're going to talk a little bit about our founders. 
the people that initiated, that got the ball really rolling back in the late 90s. Jan Shart, I'm sorry, Jan Hart Shires wore many hats. She was known for her sculptures. She was the coordinator of adult classes at Oakland Studio One Art Center, where she taught stained glass and other media. She was the former president of Pro Arts and the co-chair of East Bay Open Studios, and also a member of a number of committees, such as the Emeryville Arts Celebration. In 1997, Hartshires collaborated with Ray Louise Hayward and brainstormed the brilliant idea of initiating open studio events geared towards art, artists of African descent. The two, were re, uh, the two were able to recruit 35 artists for their first exhibition at the Community Gallery at the Richmond Art Center. I was part of that. Many of us were, well, 35 of us were. <laughs> Hartshire's creative mind and innovative spirit were a force that kept on giving. Today, Art of the African Diaspora recognizes and celebrates Jan Hartshire's through the annual Artistic Achievement Award. Now on to Ray Louise Hayward. She was born in New Orleans and raised in Los Angeles. She was inspired by her supportive parents where she earned an art degree and she earned an art degree at Cal State Northridge. She moved to the Bay Area, actively creating art in 1990 and she sold her first painting in 1991. Her colorful art celebrates the beauty of the African culture, its people, its sculpture, textiles, jewelry, and music. It also incorporates a number of African motifs using acrylics, oil pastels, collage, ink, and color pencils. Her work was recognized by KQED TV in 2003 with a Local Heroes Award in honor of Black History Month. Ray also served on the board for Richmond Art Center and the Women's Caucus of Art. And if you could hold on, um, if you could hold on on that slide, the, the photo in the lower right is one that I took and it was way, way back. I mean, it might've been 90, well, the late, the, the early years. And I'll never forget that was at the Richmond Auditorium where we each had a 10 by 10 booth and she was, she was totally immersed. She had her work up. She was just so, almost like she was sitting there just enjoying it as if you know her child was born kind of thing. But I just will never forget that special picture and how satisfied she looked. So go ahead, um, you can go ahead, Pong. Ray's true gifts were her spirit of generosity, the encouragement and mentoring she gave to new and seasoned artists. She co-founded The Art of Living Black in 97, as I mentioned earlier, with Hart, Jan Hartshires. After Jan died in 1998, Ray carried on as the guiding light of the exhibition, rich with compelling, diverse artwork, a well-attended reception, as well as self-guided studio tours and satellite exhibits. Unfortunately, Ray passed away in January of 2008 due to illness just prior to the exhibition. She was an endearing coach and leader, and she actually participated until her final days. We'll never forget that. She moved many artists from off the fence to full exhibit mode, and I personally know what that's about, and probably others do. And in one artist's words, Ray changed my life as an artist. Her support of my very first show made me feel like my work was important and valuable. She welcomed me into her creative community like a true sister and under her leadership, this organization has felt like family to me. And I think a lot of us could repeat that same quote. Okay. So now we're going to segue into another section, and this is going to be a capture, a video of several artists and visitors expressing themselves, talking their perspectives about being part of the art exhibit. Take it away, Fong. Hello. 
My name is Kelvin Curry. I'm a visual artist here in Oakland, California. And I met the co-founders, Ray and Jan, in the early 90s. I met Ray at a group art show in Los Angeles at the Baldwin Hills Mall back in the early 90s, which was called the Artists Salute to Black History Month. Now that's where Ray conceived the concept for the Art of Living Black, which is now the Art of the African Diaspora. And the show in LA was one of the huge, one of the biggest group shows uh, this side of the Mississippi. And uh, we got a chance to show our work among some of the greats, Ernie Barnes, Barnett Honeywood, Brenda Joy Smith, even Jacob Lawrence was one of the participants in this art show. Also another artist by the name of Nathaniel Bustian who studied under Charles White, which came out of the Harlem Renaissance. And uh, so Ray thought of an idea of having a group of Bay Area artists show, not only open up our studios to patrons in the Bay Area, but also giving us artists an opportunity to showcase our work in corporate environments. So I like to thank Ray Louise Hayward, I think Jan, uh, and the Richmond Arts Center, the committee, and also uh, Stephen Bruce, um, my brother Stephen Bruce, for the work he's done with the Richmond Arts Center, for the also giving us a place to showcase our work in corporate environments, to open up our studios, and to give us a legacy. Thank you. I didn't delay, I just started again, so. Okay. My name is Lorraine Bonner, and I've been part of this annual exhibit, now known as the Art of the African Diaspora, for over 20 years. Um, it's been a really wonderful experience for me. Um, this piece here, my piece, uh, Studying the Perpetrator, uh, was one of my earlier pieces, and it won the Jan Hart Shire Award back in uh, 2003. Um, my, uh, my experience with this ex exhibition has brought me uh, quite a bit of benefit, uh, including um, uh, more exposure to um, uh, exhibits, other places, venues, and galleries where I can show my work, uh, other people getting to know my work, getting my work out into the world, and as well as um, just developing friendships and uh, kind of a family feeling about uh, the people who are also exhibitors and friends of the, um, or the African diaspora. Um, and I'm really grateful to Ray Louise Hayward and Jan Hartshire, who were the founders of this um, really amazing uh, exhibition. And I'm really grateful to the other artists who are part of it. And that's 90 seconds. Okay, good. So, yeah. Do you want to do it again? No, I think that's good. Okay. Oh, hey. Well, look. While we're here, I just wanted to pop on to say how much I am endeared to this show that started out being The Art of Living Black, founded by Ray Louise Hayward. And, um, when I started over 20 years ago, I was a new fledgling artist. This show welcomed me, respected me, and throughout over the 20 years, 20 plus years I've been with the show, it has allowed me to grow and expand my art career as well as my imagination. And um, it's priceless because it's unjuried. I look forward to future years with this show and um, welcoming new artists so that they can then expand and share our beautiful selves with the world. KarensArt.com loves you and loves this show for being here and remaining. <laughs> Hello, my name is Virginia Jordan, also known as Nia. And I have been a part of this artist community, now known as the Art of the African Diaspora, since 2006. For me, it's been a sense of community, a sense of inspiration, and the opportunity to network with other artists, as well as customers. As a result of being involved in this artist community, I have sold work. I have 
had other um, opportunities that came up such as um, I did a workshop with Google and that was recommended to me by one of the artists in the group. I am now um, teaching middle school and high school and that was also recommended to me by one of the um, artists in the group. So it is um, a very good opportunity to network and meet other people um, that will open up doors for other opportunities. And it's just been wonderful. And I'm just honored to be a part of this artist community, the art of the African diaspora. And thank you for being here with us. Hi, my name is Zoe Boston, and I'm a singer, songwriter, painter, muralist, artist, creative. And I've been exhibiting in the Art of African Diaspora for about six years now. Um, this annual exhibit means so much to me. Um, it definitely was a significant contributor to my art career. It definitely helped catapult my art career. And I've gained a lot of experience and know-how from exhibiting in these shows and working and creating with all the artists involved in the exhibit. It's definitely been an eye-opening experience and something I will forever be grateful for to have been a part of and continue to be a part of. Um, I'm also thankful that we've continued to um, exhibit through the pandemic, even though it looks a little different this year. I'm, I'm very thankful that we still get to show our work and let our voices be heard and express ourselves and connect with the community. And so I'm thankful to be a part. One of the reasons I like the annual Art of the African Diaspora exhibition at the Richmond Art Center is that it allows me to exhibit my work annually. Uh, it also allows me to exhibit with a large group of artists, uh, some new and some established. Uh, this gives me the opportunity to get feedback from those artists um, and to meet new people who come to see these artists that I normally don't exhibit with, which allows me to have a new audience also. Uh, another thing I like about the exhibit is that it allows me to exhibit new work, works that I probably wouldn't exhibit because during a uh, gallery, the shows are curated and the curator gets to choose the work that they want to exhibit. This way I can exhibit work that I want to and it's new and experimental work that I haven't shown before. So that's always good because I get to get feedback from uh, the artists and the attendees at the event. The other thing I like about it is the large group of people that come to the reception. Uh, at the Richmond Art Center, uh, which gives them an opportunity to see my work, which they probably wouldn't have an otherwise an opportunity to see, which is um, beneficial to me and to them as viewers. Hey folks, Justice Renaissance here, wood sculptor from Campbell, California, by way of Phoenix, Arizona. I stumbled into the art of living black back in 2004 and was completely blindsided and overwhelmed and in love <laughs> with what I experienced, starting with uh, Ray Louise Hayward and her energy and spirit and positivity and love for black art. And also um, I, I instantly felt a sense of camaraderie with the art community. I had people tell me on the first day when I showed up to deliver my work at that first show that my work was underpriced. And, uh, and that was amazing to me that people thought enough about me to try to elevate me from where I was at. Um, and since then, you know, just the unselfishness of the art community and the willingness to share uh, ideas and inspiration and resources and to promote and support each other um, it's just been the highlight for me, you know, every year. I'm in the South Bay, so I don't get to see everyone, but coming to the main reception in Richmond every year and just reconnecting 
and seeing how people are doing and seeing new and dynamic work and encouraging others and being encouraged by others. Uh, that's the magic of the art of the African diaspora. And I will keep coming back forever. Peace. Hi, I'm Pat Patterson, and I'm a photographer, an artist, and a writer. And I've been involved with the art of the African diaspora since its inception in the late 90s. I first met co-founder Ray Hayward while we were both working at Pac Bell in uh, San Ramon, and we got involved in an art exhibit, which was a lot of fun, and we were first, uh, first timers at it. And fast forward a little bit, and she contacted me and said, hey, I want to start this project called The Art of Living Black. And it really sounded like a good idea, and it was especially good because it was at a time where we as African-American folks couldn't get in galleries or in public settings um, like we should. And so I'll always be grateful that she and Jan set, uh, set this wheel in motion. So I exhibited um, in 1997 here at my house with my son, Omari Patterson, who's also a photographer. And both my kids are, both my sons are photographers, Benjamin as well. But anyway, I um, showed for the first time and then I got involved in going to the Richmond Art Center where we exhibited every year in the uh, big uh, gallery room and to see all of these artists uh, the, the just the breadth of the scope of art shown there, the talent was just amazing. It was like, a, I said, it was like a kaleidoscope of color um, with your photography, your painters, your um, sculptures, you, you name it. And what a what a community we, we formed. And uh, it was always good to see uh, everybody there each, uh, each year. And I'll be always grateful for uh, being part of that um, exhibit and uh, looking forward to us doing it hopefully in person next year. Thank you. Greetings, Malik Saneferu here. Just to come and talk to you about the importance of the African diaspora, the art of the African diaspora. Uh, I also have to acknowledge the Art of Living Black, which was born, which was uh, first created and the art of African diaspora was developed out of that. Uh, this exhibition is extremely important to me in the right that uh, it was Ray Louise Hayward who was just constantly pushing hard to make sure that artists were delivering uh, for this particular exhibition, The Art of Living Black. And after her death, uh, we had a few hiccups in the exhibition you know, trying to pull things together and trying to do it like how she did it. Uh, but it just never really folded around the way that um, many of us who were native to that understanding. Uh, and, and, and so we had a few uh, artists who were a part of it that came together and said, you know, we're going to keep this together. And I'm thankful to them on that. So with that my, right, I must say that the, you know, it is extremely important for uh, many of you young artists to come in and be a part of the art of African diaspora as we push this into the 21st century. Hi, my name is Paula Lewis and I'm an avid art supporter. In 1997, my friend photographer Patricia Patterson held an exhibit in her home and that's where I got the first glimpse of the art of living black. The world where one can experience the works of local black artists with their creative gifts. This venue gives them the opportunity to exhibit and sell their unique pieces of visual art, sculpture, and photography. I've enjoyed and attended this event every year since then. It's one of my favorite things to do. I've been so faithful about it. I'm so happy to attend these things. But in 2020, the art of the African diaspora began. In museum style, over 100 artists displayed their works 
line by line, row by row, each one being more beautiful than the last. Now, the 2021 virtual tour is online and their work is just amazing. And what this group has done is they have reimagined themselves for the pandemic times that we're in. And I view their work with just amazement and, and, and admiration. And I'm excited. I just, I can't wait until next year. Hopefully we'll be able to be inside again. I'd like to give kudos to Stephen Bruce and the extraordinary group of artists that work with him on the steering committee. They're the ones who keep this thing going. Thanks so much. Hello, my name is Derek Norris. My wife Janet and I have been attending the Art of Living Black and the Art of the African Diaspora for over 20 years now, as you can see by the flyer that we showed in the beginning. Uh, I think what the, the shows and the exhibits have meant to us uh, over the years are about uh, black creativity and excellence. Uh, what we've really enjoyed about them have been the opening receptions, uh, the artist talk, the open studios, and the ability to meet the artists and speak with them and get to know them over the years. Uh, it's one of those things where we can try to support the artistic community when we can, and we look forward to doing it every year. Uh, really missed it last year when people weren't able to go out to the open studios and it's still a little slow this year, but we're, again, looking forward to being able to go out and see the artists again and enjoy being out with this uh, very creative community. So that we would just wanted to say thanks to all the artists and, uh, again, many more years of uh, creativity and excellence. Thanks. Beautiful. So next, we will take a look at some vintage um, video, rarely seen clips of, Way, of Ray Hayward and uh, a few other artists talking about being inspired. I can remember my mother having these books, child craft books. We grew up in New Orleans, and I don't know if they had those books anywhere but in the South, but they were red books, and they were educational books. There was one book that was a long book that had art in it, and I used to remember looking through that book all the time, just looking and turning the pages and just looking and looking at the paintings and just loving to look at the art. By having the Art of Living Black and also shows like the Artist Salute to Black History Month, young kids, children, uh, people of all ages have an opportunity to see artists of African descent and they may um, be inspired if they have that talent to pursue uh, something in the arts or not be discouraged and say, oh, I can draw, which a lot of people say, oh, you know, I have that talent, but they don't think of doing anything with it. And it um, always touches me when I see the young kids come in from elementary school and how they're looking at the art and they're asking questions. And I, I did hear a comment from one of the mothers that said after her son saw the show, he went home and he wanted to draw and he wanted to create. And I said, that's, that's what it's all about. That's what I like to see. That's what I like to hear. That's, that's what's touching to me when you see it in their eyes. It's like when you see a kid open up their favorite toy or they get something for Christmas or something for their birthday that they've been wanting. or uh, it's, You just see it in their eyes, an expression on their face. I can remember also one reception where uh, a father brought his son, his children, and you saw... His son was about five or six year old, years old, running across the gallery, running to his daddy's painting, you know, and just being so proud. And just, um, so that's art in the family, 
you know. And here his dad has an opportunity to display, and you never know. His son may be an artist or just be inspired by his dad. I'd yeah. say um, maybe 10%, 5% is perspiration. All the other is inspiration. And because it's, you know, planning the show is just... Uh, big inspiration, a big joy. After, when you see the results of the show, you know, it's a big boost. I can remember my friend Jan, the first year we did the show, and we were just in the community gallery, and she said she saw me walking in. And when I walked in, and I was looking at all the art and saying, oh, you know, it's up, it's this, it's that. You know, I'm, this is going through my head, but... I guess she was observing me coming in, and she told me, she said, oh, look at her, she's walking on air. <laughs> and I remember walking, and I was feeling so good. And, I was, and she said it was like I was climbing and walking and getting higher and higher as I was, like, walking in, just, wow, look at this. And that's how I feel every time I see the exhibit, when it's up and when it's done. And, and it looks so beautiful. It's just you know, big boost. And when we have the reception, all the people come out and it, it's just a good feeling. So, you know, you, you kind of forget all that you've gone through and then um, it just starts again when that January date comes again and said, okay, are all, is all the art going to come in and blah, blah, blah. And then I'll have a crew of people calling people that haven't shown up yet. So it's kind of, you know, planned out and it's really, it's really, really a joy. The co-founder of the Art of Living Black and the spirit and force behind everything you see here. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> um, uh, this piece is called uh, Night and Day, and it actually it comes from a series of um, images that I've been doing the past couple of years. And it kind of started from my being on the phone at work and just doodling and drawing loops and then filling the loops with an image. And the images came out as half faces and, you know, strong shoulders. And it's kind of a, a, a comment on the, the diversity and the strength of women. So that's why they have these strong shoulders. And the diversity is the, you know, each race. And the yellow depicts Asian, red, Native American, the white, the white, and Latin American. And uh, the blue is for black. You've heard of this phrase, uh, he was so, no, we are people who are darker than blue. And the purple, he was so black, he was purple. Um, or she was so black. <laughs> Which is a beautiful thing, because yes. it's a beautiful thing. I mean, I visited Africa in uh, 1975 and saw beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people, oceans of color with the, the dresses and textiles that they wore. And that was just a life-changing uh, experience. So. Um, also, last year I was really, I was pretty ill, and it took, there was a time when I couldn't hold a brush or a pen. Mm -hmm. Hands were very stiff. And I started out with something simple, and I was just happy to accomplish this. And I want to get to where I'm, you know, more detailed, like this series. I don't know if you can see that. And where I used to be very, very detailed with pen and ink. And, you know, I'll get back to that. But I had a little dimension with a little oil pastel just to show a little dimension. And um, I do this series with just different kinds of themes. There's a birds of a feather, so they're birds, and some of them fanfare with fans. But this one was, and I just kind of evolved um, because the way I'm feeling today is night and day. Last year was you know, come out of the darkness and into the light. And A lot of my pieces are inspired by the elders in my family. I have beautiful photographs, vintage photographs, tin types, works on glass of various family members that go back several generations. And I have letters and cards and all sorts of memorabilia that I kind of relate to. And um, to bring that up, I used to call myself a story painter. I really believe everyone has at least one story in them. Part of my work is, has to do with kind of redefining you, who you are and getting away from boundaries and um, people telling you that you should be this way, whether it's a, 
the racial, feminist, whatever, just kind of redefining who you are and connecting to your ancestors and your roots, all that is very important to me. Inspiration uh, does not come and go, that it's with you all the time. Um, well, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to hear the, the person talk about it. But it was similar to what I thought in the sense that I think I said, I get inspired, but I don't receive it all the time. I mean, I, I think it's there, but whether I'm receptive to it or not depends on me personally. So I kind of agree with that statement that was made. Because um, I know um, the way I feel and my emotions, the, the weather, uh, what I hear, smell, all brings uh, 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 inspiration. But sometimes I had a long day at work or whatever, and I don't don't let it in. What got me here, um, or, or into doing art or, or displaying my art, was I was off for a year at, from work, which I work in a computer industry, very uh, tense and stressful. Um, so that year that I was off my mind quieted. I didn't have to go to work. Didn't have to get up and go to work and deal with all that corporate stuff. And it was the most creative that I've ever been in my life. But then I sat down and I analyzed it. Why? I didn't have a nine to five. Nothing blocking that inspiration from, from entering me and, and, and allowing me to, to move on living in America and in the world, survival doesn't really come easy. Survival and fulfillment and thriving doesn't come easy. And, you know, as a young girl, the world was, and still is, but really as a young girl, the world was very dangerous. And I spent a lot of time in my head devising my escape routes whatever they may be, you know, they could be figments of my imagination, but my world was so scary that I, um, you know, really felt like I needed to figure out how I was going to get out of the room or figure out how I was going to get to school. And I think that's really the foundation of my creativity. I remember going to school, rarely did I walk down the street. I would go in my backyard and I'd climb on the fence and I'd walk along the fence, you know, and I'd find ways to, you know, and all of that I feel is, is um, you know, is a part of creativity. You know, um, the sad thing about it is it's derived from trauma, really. But I think that I'd have to say that those would be my first memories of being inspired to be creative. That in terms of the work that I do, a number of the pieces are expressions of empathy for what I see that has gone wrong um, in culture or in society. We have to begin to feel for one another. You know, I remember one of the things that hit me very powerfully when I was a, a young person, I mean, maybe like... 13 or so and at home and watching television and whatever the show was the statement was made I cried because I had no shoes and then I saw a man who had no feet and I never forgot that you know um, and you have to begin to look at and feel for people in our society who are lost uh, who are in pain who are addicted who are afraid um, because there's a lot of that out there. As a kid, I always liked to draw and color. And my cousins would ask me when they were trying to draw people or draw this or draw that, they'd say, Ray, could you draw this bow for me or draw this or whatever? And it just seemed like something it was fun to do and I liked to do and it made me feel good to do it. Wow, <clears throat> amazing. So 
and so much from the heart. Do you see how art really brings out the emotions and the, the heartfelt thoughts from so many? So that was great. Next, we're going to share a montage of program covers over the years, illustrating the diversity of art that was, to, that was um, exhibited. And I don't know about you, but we always, if you had been to the exhibits, you carried around that program and it was your, it was your um, roadmap to seeing all of the art. So we'll take a look at that. Excellent, excellent. Great flashbacks. So now we're gonna move on to the annual award winners, which is always an exciting part of the reception festivities. <clears throat> Excuse me. On behalf of the, Africa, the art of the African diaspora, I'm very pleased to announce or actually re-announce the three winners of the Artistic Achievement Award. They were announced last year and due to the pandemic, they will carry their award status in 2021. 
and they will be honored in our, at our in-person event in 2022. Can't wait. So our first uh, uh, awardee is Tiffany Conway. And by the way, if there are any questions, we're gonna um, have each one speak. And if there are any questions of the artist, please put your uh, questions in the chat box. And my partner, Virginia Jordan, will collect those and we'll uh, read them off after they're all, all three have finished. Tiffany Conway. Her visual paintings are the break of generational curses and the door to beautiful beginnings. Overcoming stereotypes and an absentee mother, art has provided Tiffany the tools to communicate in a way that she was not able to do so before. Growing her creativity from life experiences, art has allowed Tiffany to retreat, restore, and express all that she has learned from moving through the world as a Black woman. Congratulations, Tiffany. And I'll do the, I know everybody else is muted, muted. I'll do the applause for us all. And uh, Tiffany, if you could unmute yourself and say a few words. Thank you. Um, so yeah, my name is Tiffany Conway. I was born in uh, Southern California and raised in the Bay. And, um, you know, I, I went to college, but I would say most of my work or the work that I've you know, created in the last six years are, you know, from continuing to teach myself. Um, you know, this last year, um, you know, winning my Artistic Achievement Award has been, it's been a, a whirlwind in a, in a really great way. Um, I feel like I'm, you know, in the midst of an artist community that I didn't have before. And I've been exhibiting um, more so in the last year than I have, um, you know, my entire art career. Um, you know, in this last year, I've had some first. Um, one of the first I've had was uh, the opportunity to do my, you know, my first, uh, you know, public a group art exhibition, and that would be with uh, rip, rip, Rhythmics, excuse me, a little tongue tied. Um, and it was a, a public art uh, campaign to rename um, Jackson Park in Alameda. Um, if you, maybe we can show a picture later. Um, so yeah, I, you know, in terms of my art, I tend to use uh, my art is a dialogue with my with spirit and with my inner self and art has been a facilitator for my healing. Um, I would say that, you know, sometimes I don't always know what's going to come up and uh, things come up in terms of understanding the piece comes up later. Um, sometimes I have to sit with work for a while. Um, but I think I work best um you know when i work from a place of stillness and you know work through with um intuition uh so one of the i can talk about one of the pieces is that if that's okay <laughs> yeah you have about 30 seconds if you don't mind just so we can move along but we'd love to hear it. yes sure um so the last uh painting there is called heal thy damn self um that was created in 2019 and, um, you know, I, I use other people or other figures as um, a form of a self portrait. I don't always like to put myself in the work, um, but essentially the figure is um, in need of healing. Um, and, um, you know, the, basically the person that is embracing her is herself. It's the inner version of herself that is projected outward. Um, and I, you know, through this work, um, I didn't, again, I didn't necessarily always know what I'm creating at the time, but it, you know, with time and appreciation, I learned um, what I was going through and, and the lessons I learned from creating that piece. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. And congratulations. Thank you. Next, we'll have Val Kai, if you could, um, for, don't come forward yet, but <laughs> let me read a, a little of your bio or your statement. 
Being exposed early to art and the art world is how Val Kaye started. She began by studying music, then dance and painting. Along with those endeavors, there was a camera. It was present from high school on. Ever present, photography, photography slowly became her main vehicle of expression. It was present from high school on. Oops, I'm sorry. Creating and capturing moments, preserving and documenting the black experience is her artistic vision. All facts of her work present a world of images, a world where she continues to create, to share, and to grow. Congratulations, Val. And I'll give you the applause for the entire community. <laughs> Visitors. Thank you. Thank so, you. Um, I'm really away. very grateful to be here. Uh, I'd only participated in the art of living black um, or the, the art of the African diaspora. Um, for th the second year, I was given this award, so I'm still kind of blown away. Um, so far, I, I, I love the exhibit. It's, it's, it's a very warm place to be for an artist, um, to be among other artists other, other, for me, other black artists and to be recognized in such a uh, prestigious venue. So thank you very much, um, Richmond Art Center and Rhythmics um, for giving me this honor. So um, this year, I, uh, the, the photo that you guys have been seeing all over the place is the second line. Um, the second line comes out of a, a of a Southern tradition uh, in New Orleans where they uh, honor the dead with a jazz band. Um, certain individuals in the community uh, are honored uh, by the church and their family. They hire a band uh, and they form a procession from the, the deceased home or the home of their family um, or the church to the burial ground. And uh, those bands are not that big. They're mostly brass instruments being played and drums. Um, out here in California, step up in history, historically, um, it's kind of taken out of context. We have two bands here that uh, carry this tradition. And one is the Twilight Band, which you see photographed in the uh, three images, the three top images that, um, that I presented this year. Um, I have a lot of different focuses. I don't concentrate on just one. Photography for me is just life. And um, fortunately, I'm uh, in the community um, as an artist and I participate in a lot of different types of activities, not just photography. Um, so I have all of this work that travels, sort of travels with me. I keep my camera with me all the time. And now that we have phones, you know, the phone. So anyway, so moving on, uh, the next image is uh, a mural uh, that I photographed uh, in San Francisco. I started photographing murals and doing street art around 2009. And at the time I was working in, uh, in the Mission District which is rich with a lot of uh, mural work. So I would go on, instead of going to lunch and eating, I would go out and do little short photo walks in the, around in the area. So um, this photo came out of one of my photo walks. Um, and in particular, uh, I have a lot of these types of photos of, uh, of murals that were created out of um, all of the um, the murders that were committed, by, that all of the murders from the, uh, the police and various individuals, black individuals that perished in that uh, in those situations, and Mario Woods was one of them. Thank you. Um, and um, the last two. The last two, I'm probably running out of time at this point. 
You have about, last, you have about, about, you have about um, 30 seconds if you don't. Okay. The last two are two other focuses that I, that I go into. One is performance art and the other is portraits. Um, so that's those two. Um, this one was taken at one of the many uh, uh, events that we have in the Bay Area, Black events, the uh, uh, Life is Living Festival, uh, the saxophonist. Uh, and then the last one is um, an example of some of my portrait work, the twins. And this was taken right after uh, uh, Black Panther was released. And um, these two little friends of mine wanted to dress up in, in costume and do something off of that. So that's where the costuming and, and the face paint. So again, I'm very, very honored to be part of this whole happening. I prefer to call this a happening instead of just an exhibit um, because it, it, it includes so much. You know, it's, it includes, it's our art being featured um, and it's also a, a community event that lasts for weeks and for last for weeks, a couple of months. So thank you so much. Thank you, Val. Thank you so much. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, fan. I'm sorry, I called you fan, uh, Val before. Fan, thank you so much. And I'm gonna do the applaud. Everybody, we can all do a visual, you know, to say how much we appreciate your work. And look forward to seeing all three of you at next year's live exhibit. So um, I want to check in with um, Virginia Jordan to see if we had any questions in the in the uh, chat area. Virginia, did you get any? Um, no, I don't see any questions in here. Um, just congratulations and beautiful work, but no questions yet. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Did I skip fan? I'm sorry. Oops, I have to check because someone just asked me. So I, I have Tiffany, I did Val Kaye. Now we're talking Fan Lee Warren. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Are you there? I'm here. Okay, thank you. Let me let me read your uh, artist statement first. I am so sorry. Excuse That's okay. Me, everybody. Fan Lee Warren lives, works, and teaches drawing, painting, and art history at Laney Community College in Oakland. She was born in Birmingham, Alabama, and raised in Chicago. Her work depicts a mixture of popular and historical perceptions of Black people in the Americas. She arranges her figures within layered fragments of memories and events surrounded by the transformative angel spiral in, on the stressed paper. So congratulations, Fan, and you can go right ahead with your comments. Uh, thank you very much. Um, again, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm gonna go over a little bit of what you said just um, again, my work is about how the past affects the present and the future of Black people in the Americas. Also, I have this great need to pay homage to historical memories and my elders' wisdom. Now, the, there's two works on paper in this exhibit are from my legacy series. I work in series. And the print, the larger piece, um, which is called Shifting Messages, this is from my newer series. I want to talk a little bit about the images because I think it'll make it easy because they're probably a little bit more complicated. Um, so the the depiction of children represents both the modern and contemporary peri periods in the work, and the background often represents the historical past. The spiral, as you said, it represents the spirit of the time and the cycle of life. I really love this quote that says, each loop of the spiral brings one back to the same place in the timeless movement and a flow. The com to convey the history and its impact upon the present society, 
that's when I stress the paper surface. And I often use fire and earth and herbs. And basically I'm trying to emulate an old document. And then I draw the images and sometimes I print on those uh, pieces of paper and of course paint. And I use both traditional and non-traditional materials. And then what I try to do with my images is that I often try to find antique frames or some sort of colonial frames to put them in. Um, I think that's, oh, I got way more images than I thought. And I have different images, but it's all good. <laughs> That's that's what I'm going to say. Are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. I, I was just okay. making sure. Okay. I jumped the gun a little earlier. So. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I seem to have the images that I had from Remix and not the one ones that I have for um, the Richmond Art Center, but it still gives you an idea what they are. Sure, sure. Well, very good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, again, I'll do the visual. You can actually hear my class. Yes, thank you. We will see all three of you, as I was saying earlier, next okay. year live at the live event. So, okay, um, with that, and I, I and I have to apologize. I got names mixed up there earlier. So, uh, and then also asked for questions ahead of time. But now we know that there. Well, let's just check. Let me check with Virginia. Any uh, any any questions? No, we're okay. Um, wait, there is a question from Ellen Peachman. Does FAN teach in a setting that is open to the public without actually being enrolled at Laney? Not at this time. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. But not at this time. Okay. Cool. And uh, the same person, Ellen, says, I wonder if the other artists teach in settings. You can unmute yourselves, artists, and uh, of the three of the three artists, is that Val trying to? Val, can you unmute yourself? Who's? Let's see. Who's? I'm sorry. What was the What was the question? Do any of you um, also teach? No, I do no, not. Teach. No. I've never taught art. <laughs> okay. All yeah. right. Um, Ellen says, I am guessing that many of us would love to be able to learn from many of the contributors to the art of the African diaspora. And I would, I would throw in, and maybe Stephen Bruce wants to mention, I, I, from time to time, there have been offerings um, so the Richmond Art Center is about to launch a series of three free workshops taught by Art of the African Diaspora Artists. Thank you. Okay. Anthony Smalls has a question. Are you having any individual shows this year? Who is that directed to? Um, I believe it is directed to any of the um, artists, okay. everyone. So any of you go ahead and unmute yourselves and- I am. <laughs> um, I will have my uh, solo show uh, April 26th. Um, it's coming up soon. Um, so if you want more information, you can always, um, visit my website. Um, there's information on uh, the Richmond Art Center website. And you can also follow me on Instagram at Project Get Free. But I'll have more information on my show fairly soon. Great, thank you. OK, another question from Ellen. Um, wants to know whether there are any aspects of the show that will be available to be viewed once the wrap is opened. Any other aspects of the show that will be available? To be viewed once the rack is opened. Let me just unmute myself and just say, 
um, speaking as one person, I'm sure I'm not alone. We all could learn so much from all of you. And I'm just wondering if the any any aspects of this remarkable show are gonna be available live. We are gonna get out of this, you guys, we really are. <laughs> I hate to think that we've missed this art permanently for the whole year. And so I'm just wondering if RAC is, is the art center is, and the um, art of the diaspora is, are working together to see to it that we really can experience the art in real life sometime during the course of the year. That's my question and I'll get back on mute. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Pat, if I could answer that. Please, yes. Uh, so, Hey, the, the Richmond Art Center uh, will be announcing their their opening uh, later, uh, I think this month. Um, but a lot of those questions, a lot of these questions, we could probably answer in the uh, at the end. And also, um, if you go to the site, I know there's satellite shows that are available, and all that information is available on the Richmond Art Center website, where you can go to some live in-person shows um, that will be happening all the way through May. Okay, great. Thank you. Maureen would like to know what about the satellite exhibitions? Isn't that a way to see everyone's art too? Absolutely, absolutely. Indivi you know, individual. And some are doing live and some are doing totally virtual. I'm just checking um, any other here. So Karen's art is currently at Creative Framing and Gallery. Um, 1200 Park Boulevard in Oakland until March 27th. And so what we'll do in a minute, we're gonna go through the resource page and you'll see where you can click and find out all the details of the individual artists events, okay? So again, congratulations to, I'm gonna move on to the next segment, um, but congratulations to all of the artists, the, um, the, the three winners. And next we're going to share a few receptions from the past, bring you back, take you back to memory lane. So Fawn, take it away.
excellent, I should say, excellent. So we're gonna show next some recent interviews from 2019, where we hear from some of the current artists and their insights about exhibitions. Come on down to Richmond. <laughs> Come on down, see our stuff. Hello, my name is Stephen Bruce. Uh, I am the spokesman for the steering committee for uh, the 2019 Art of Living Black. I'm a working artist here in the city of Richmond. Uh, I work in, with acid uh, patinas on copper. Art of Living Black was discovered, it was started in 1997. Uh, the, the original founder was uh, Jan Hart Shires. And uh, in the second show, uh, as they started to develop it, Ray Louise Haywood came, to, came on. And together, they uh, put the show um, you know, forward. Jan actually passed away before the second show. Uh, and at that point, Ray Louise took the show on and put it on uh, until 2007. Um, at 2008, she passed away just prior to the show. And um, her vision was that for an artist of African descent to have the opportunity to show um, wasn't, wasn't so accessible, at least in her eyes at the time. And so this show gives artists the opportunity to show, um, again, in a professional setting um, and see what their work looks like, you know, that they're worthy of, of an exhibit. Uh, and maybe they take that energy and they go somewhere else um, and beyond the art of living black. And so from 2008 on, uh, Stephen Hawkins, uh, Ray's husband, and Henry Shires, Jan's husband, kept the show going. And um, up until this year, uh, 2019, this was the first year it's been put on by the steering committee and uh, the steering committee of artists who participate in the show and have about 136 years of experience of participating in the Art of Living Black. The Art of Living Black is an organization of different people who self-identify with African-American descent. And they may come from all over the place, but basically it involves people, artists, who live in the greater San Francisco Bay Area. We have a series of events that come together. Initially, the kickoff is at the Richmond Art Center, which has hosted the presentation for 23 years. The original first exhibit started in 1997, and we did, at some point, add on open studios, and the open studios were also connected with the Richmond Art Center, but eventually kind of peeled off to different sites around the San Francisco Bay Area. So there are different entities that accept the responsibility of showing various artworks, various types of artwork, various media in these different locations. The Art of Living Black shows you the magnitude of African-American artists that have important and interesting work. This year I was given the opportunity to participate in a satellite and open studio in that more people saw my artwork than my friends and relatives and um, people at the Richmond Art Center. I actually sold a piece of art, so now I can say that um, I have a collector. Well, um, one of the unique things about it is that it's, since it's non-juried, it incorporates artists that are beginners and professional as well. And since it's non-juried, we also have a juror that comes and gives awards to three artists every year. And those three artists get to be featured um, in the following year with multiple artworks. Art of Living Black is definitely important for artists significantly for visibility's sake. Um, I think it's powerful to know that, you know, black artists have a space to be visible in terms of showing their craft and knowing that each and everyone's craft comes in many levels, mediums, dynamics. Um, we can see how many messages we can portray from, from their art or even just appreciate their art in terms of what they do and, and appreciate their, their individuality and their expression. So it's, it's very important to have 
um, space to uh, create, co-create, and be visible in it. It's, a, it's an annual party for me. I look forward to it because I only see many of these people once a year, um, and I typically start to work on the, the piece that I want to present six or seven months in advance. I'm even thinking about ideas for next year now, and so it's the culmination of my work up to the event, um, but seeing everybody is just a big party, um, and it's a great way to sort of, you know, put a bow around this work that I've been thinking about, and after the presentation, then I can hang out and see some of my friends. I was standing next to my piece, and um, uh, about six young women came up to me, and I was actually, in, they felt I was in their way of being able to see the piece. And so um, this young woman said, well, can you move out of the way? Uh, because we want to take a picture. And uh, Tomei was standing next to me. In fact, Tomei, who is another artist, we were both talking. And so Tomei said, and we, we did move, and then Tomei said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you know who the artist of this piece is? And she asked the young woman. They said, no. Um, uh, do you even know her name? They said, no. Well, you just asked her to move away from her, her piece. And it was, it was funny that I was being asked to move away from something that I created so that they could take a picture of it. But it also affirmed me that the piece that I created was important to them that they wanted to take a picture of it in front of it. They wanted themselves as a part of my work. And so um, I think that I've reached my, my goal when I can um, experience people that I created my art for uh, identifying with it so much so that they want to take a picture with it and they want to be a part of it. I think the art of living black is important because it is an opportunity for artists to show their work. Um, a lot of new artists maybe have never shown their work to anyone but family. Uh, the Art of Louis Black is a, a chance to show your work to a, a greater audience and to see the work of other artists some of the people in the show are so talented, but they don't know it because they've never been told. They've never seen their work, you know, in this kind of venue. And a lot of people, like myself, think that you have to be educated in art, but you really don't. Some of the best artists of all types don't have official art education, music education, that kind of thing. So the Art of Living Black is a platform for lots of different kinds of artists. I came to this show many years before I actually participated. And uh, when I picked up my camera and started photographing again, I realized from the beginning that this was the first show I wanted to be in and uh, that was really great. It's great to be part of the Art of Living Black. Come on down to Richmond. <laughs> Come on down, see our stuff. Such rich stories. Thank you all who participated in that set of interviews. Very deep, rich stories. So right now we want to share a message from Charles Kim, representing our new partners at Macy's Union Square, San Francisco. I'm Charles Kim, store manager here at Union Square Macy's. Um, really just uh, so excited and proud that we were able to host you as well as the Art of the African Diaspora here at Union Square Macy's. Uh, my team, Constance, Ren, uh, we're just so proud that we were able to host your incredible organization to showcase Black brilliance in our celebration of Black History Month uh, during February. Um, as a total company, we are just so, um, we're committed, we're enlightened, you know, we want to be, um, you know, at the forefront of leading our communities through change, uh, to achieve equality and equity, 
and social justice. And uh, you know, we just thank you for giving us that opportunity. Um, I know, you know, to a customer, they were just so blown away by the work uh, that you all uh, produced and were able to showcase. And they felt so good that, you know, Macy's really stands for, for supporting our communities and, and, and Black History Month and Black Thrift Brilliance. Uh, this is something that I hope that we can continue in the long future. Um, you know, I hope this was like a first annual and this is something that we can make bigger and bigger every year uh, to give voice and to give life to incredible artists out there and to really just celebrate you know, our black communities and our company Macy's. So all the best to all of you. Thank you so much for your time and efforts. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again next year. Happy 2021 and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much, Charles Kim. Um, now, I wanna just say that I want to think about if we could think about the team partners that have worked so hard to get us to where we are today. So all that you've seen today and all that's planned for this year's program could not have been possible by without some great teamwork from several organizations. So we have some special words and live uh, words uh, from our collaborators this year. And uh, first we'll have Jennifer Radakovich talk to us. Jennifer? Thank you, Pat. Uh, yeah, my name is Jennifer Radakovich. I'm the Associate Director at Rhythmics Cultural Works. And this has been such a lovely reception. And we've been really thrilled this year to um, be able to be an event partner with Art of the African Diaspora and Richmond Art Center to host this reception. And in February, we hosted the first satellite exhibit for Art of the African Diaspora, which was called Demystifying the Journey. Um, we also partnered earlier in the fall with the six artists who exhibit with Art of the African Diaspora to create this lovely art installation you see behind me that Tiffany referenced um, in Alameda's former Jackson Park, which is now renamed Chochenyo Park. And you can find both of these events on Rhythmic's website. Um, and we have the reception videos there as well that you can see. And this exhibit in Chochenyo Park is gonna be up through the end of April. So you can still see that live. And I just wanna thank all of the artists and Art of the African Diaspora Steering Committee and Richmond Art Center um, for having us come in as event partners to help host this event for everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer. Next, we'll have Amy Spencer, who's from Richmond Art Center. Amy? Hi, um, I'm Amy. I work at Richmond Art Center. I, um, I just want to make a quick announcement that we don't actually have a reopening date yet, but we are moving towards that and hopefully we'll be able to make an announcement um, sometime this spring. So sign up for our newsletter. If you are wanting to come back to Richmond Art Center, you'll get the news first there. Um, so I've worked at Richmond Art Center for three years and it's been an amazing experience learning about and from the artists in Art of the African Diaspora. Um, Richmond Art Center is very honored to be part of this happening, um, to use Val uh, words. Um, we're very committed to the partnership that we have with Art of the African Diaspora and um, we're just so excited to start working with the steering committee um, to start planning activities uh, for the 25th anniversary to be held in person at the Richmond Art Centre. Um, so just thank you everyone, especially to all the artists who share your work so generously um, and uh, cheers to many more years. I love it. Cheers to more, many more years, I love that. So next we have Stephen Bruce, who is the chair of the uh, African, of the African, excuse me, the art of the African diaspora. Stephen. Can you unmute? I had to unmute myself. <laughs> Hello everybody. Uh, I wanna thank, uh, take a minute to thank the steering committee um, steering committee, we have an auxiliary committee. Uh, they've been meeting every week since October. And so I really want to acknowledge them because uh, 
the whole program, if there's more to it than, other than the reception itself, uh, there's events going on. And so uh, the steering committee has done an amazing job. And I just want to thank them for their. Uh, I also want to thank Macy's, our new partner. Um, this year, uh, hosted uh, a satellite exhibit and are looking to do more and beyond the Bay Area. Um, I want to recognize Rhythmics. Uh, uh, Rhythmics has, has been phenomenal. And um, um, I asked them, you know, could you have some help with, could we have some help with this? And, uh, and they jumped right in with two feet. They might have jumped in deeper than they thought. Um, and in particular, I really want to uh, acknowledge uh, Jennifer and Fawn for the work that they've done helping us with this program, guiding us. And um, we, we wouldn't have had a program without them. So I really want to acknowledge them and let them know that I really appreciate all the work that they put in. And then, uh, last, I won't say lastly, I also want to thank, acknowledge uh, Patricia Patterson, um, who embraced this role as moderator. And it's a lot of details and it's a lot of work. And so Patricia, thank you uh, for your effort. And then uh, last but not least, the Richmond Art Center. The Richmond Art Center has been a partner with uh, the Art of Living Black, uh, Art of the African Diaspora for 25 years. Um, and the partnership has grown tighter in the last three years. And I, um, I, I'd be wrong if I didn't say that uh, a good portion of that is due to Amy Spencer and, uh, and the way that she supports uh, the steering committee, supports the program, and, um, and is just an advocate for us. And so um, thank you, Richmond Art Center. Uh, thank you, Amy. And thank you all for coming and uh, enjoying the show. I'm gonna turn it back over to Pat. Thank you, Stephen. So our next, we're gonna segue into some questions and let's see, um, we've got about time for two. Let's see, I've collected two that I'll share. So this one is from Carolyn. How do I find out about dates of the various events like open studios and artist talks? So that's one that's kind of repeated itself throughout the uh, afternoon. So you can find out those dates, open studios, artist talks, and things like that by going to our website, aotad.org. You can also go to the Richmond Arts Center website. And the thing you do is once you're on there, you click on um, 2021 exhibit. And there you'll find just a, a ton of information. Um, and uh, so that's the easy, that's the easy one. And we're going to put the link, if we haven't already, on the uh, chat, chat line. But it will list all of your, the information you need, as well as links to the 130 plus artists. So if you get a chance, take a look and you have to, you know, get a snack and a sandwich and go through, have a good time doing an art tour there. So the second question is from uh, Sarah. Is the art for sale? And if so, how do I find out about the prices? Very important question, right? And the answer is, in most cases. And the way you find out is, again, going through the link to the site. And uh, you will see, as you go through the individual artists' links, they will specify whether or not art is for sale. And sometimes you'll see NFS, not for sale. but many are selling their art. So yes, yes, and yes. And let's see, I think what we'll do is, like we had said before, we'll send the, the rest of you your answers to your questions um, through email, okay? And thanks so much for that, uh, for, for your interest. So now we're going to take a moment to thank the people who work so hard to put the program together. <clears throat> And then we'll also see some informational slides that, I, as I said, you might want to take a photo of. They're about five slides in. So I'm going to have you just review these, just like if you were at the movies. You know how they go by real fast? No, we're not going to do them that fast, but I'll let you view them.
So this is our informational piece about the next, uh, next Saturday's uh, artist talk, Art in the Time of Pandemic. It's on the 27th, 3 to 4.30 Pacific time. So this on online conversation explores how artists have coped during the pandemic. How and where did they show their work? How were they creative? How did the pandemic affect their mental well-being? These are just a few of the topics that will be discussed. And the participating artists include Raymond L. Haywood, Letitia Holly, Jean Dominique, Ashara Ikundayo, Akili Simba, Wanda Sabir, and Idris Hassan. Please RSVP at the richmondartcenter.org website to receive the, the Zoom link. Can you? Can you go back one minute, um, Fong? So if you haven't, I should have cued you to take a shot of that if you want, but if you have a chance, do that. Okay, Fong, all set. And then here is our contact uh, information. So the website is the abbreviation or the uh, acronym for Art of the African Diaspora. So aotad.org. And you may email us at aotadexhibition at gmail.com. And also, you can um, like us on our Facebook page, which is the same. Africa, uh, it's, it's not the same here as here, but art by the name, Art of the African Diaspora. Okay, so that information ought to also be in the, um, the link, I'm sorry, the chat as well. So last we're going to, we're going to shift to the remaining 2021 Art of the African Diaspora images, some beautiful artwork done by our artists. So please remain and enjoy and thank you so much for joining us. Do remember that the art is for sale and support our artists by vis visiting their specific pages. And so this rounds out our program today. And I'd like to thank you all from near and far for joining us and supporting the art of the African diaspora. Thank you and see you next year in person.